Ecclesiasticus chapter 7 and verse 1. Do no evil, so shall no harm come unto thee. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises and all glory unto Yahweh Bashmi al Shai. I to give double honors to the apostles of great men so and do rule well. Salutation to the men of the hopeful and sincere elect. There's a brother Marcus out here in trend. I just want to do a little edification for the elect's sake. And the name of this lesson would be You won't be protected if you do wrong. You won't be protected if you do wrong. All right. And what I mean by do wrong means that you constantly going off, you living a, a wicked life. Your, your wickedness totally outweighs your righteousness. As the scripture says, there is no righteous man that liveth and sinneth not. So, you know, not that it's a, um, a scapegoat or a loophole, but being in this flesh means that there are times that we're going to fall short. As I said, that is not a loophole. Being in this flesh means that we are in a position where we fight the spirits or the spirits on the left hand to show our desire to serve Yahaba Hashem Shai. That is what it really means to be in this flesh. Not a, a, a license to sin, but a chance to show the Lord Yahaba Hashem Shai that we are for Him and we truly desire Him. Alright? And the time that we are about to approach into in Jacob's trouble, we are going to need the Lord Yahaba Hashem Shai on our right hand. We are going to need the Lord at our right hand defending us. As the scripture says, as birds flying. All right. We're going to need the Lord to defend us. But if we do wrong, if we do iniquity, if we live wickedly, physically, spiritually, mentally, we're not going to be defended. Right. The Lord, he's not going to be there for us. <laughs> There's the book of Psalms 125 and verse 3 says, For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Alright, so you do, you see that do it wrong, shall receive the wrong which he had done. Alright, verse 4, it says, Do good, O Yahweh, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. So you have to be upright. There's not, there's not something face value. There's not you out there with the most clean garments, most eloquent speech, and, you know, bringing out the most precepts, trying to, you know, entice a crowd, trying to be, you know, that, that, that upstanding citizen so that people could look at you with praise and honor. This is about praising and pleasing the him that called you to be a, a, a soldier, all right? So you have to be upright from your heart. It means that your righteousness has to shine from within. All right, your righteousness have to shine from within. If you're not shining from within, then basically you just, you know, different from the wicked scribes and Pharisees. All right, we have to please Yahaba Shemi Al Shai. Wow. All right, we have to please the Lord. See, we have to do the things that please and unto Him. Go out there to His work, do the lessons, wake up the elect, but also to keep yourself unspotted from the world. All right. It says do good unto them that be good and the good that the lord gonna do to us in the time of trouble is that he gonna be with us he gonna deliver us that is the good that the lord gonna do he said that my servant shall eat but you shall be hungry all right you want the lord to feed you to give you drink to shelter you to give you security in the day of trouble all right it's just like a relationship with a woman. When a woman goes into a relationship with a man, she goes into a relationship also seeking security. All right? And we in this because we also want security from the Lord, Yahaba Hashem Shai. Because he's the one bringing the plagues. And how else are we going to you know, be safe in a time of trouble if not the Lord at our right hand? All right? This is the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 13. It says, Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil and canst not look on iniquity. So yes, if you live in wickedly, the Lord, he's going to turn away from you. 
scripture says draw near unto yahweh and he will draw near unto you if you if you continuously doing wicked the lord yahweh shimmy shai he just gonna depart the lord yahweh shimmy shai is going to depart from you if you live in a wicked life all right if you live in a wicked life the lord yahweh shimmy shai is gonna depart from you all right it says, Wherefore lookest thou on them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue, when the wicked devour the man that is more upright, um, righteous than he. Right? Um, I'm going to bring up this one here real quick. This is Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6. Alright? It says, verse 17, it says, For the very true beginning of her, talking about wisdom, is the desire of discipline, and the care of discipline is love basically breaking down how to get close to the most high and love is the keeping of her laws and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption and incorruption maketh us near unto yahweh that's how we're gonna draw near unto the lord and he's gonna draw near unto you by being incorrupt scripture says he's of pure eyes than to behold iniquity all right it says therefore the desire of wisdom bring it a kingdom and that is the only how you're going to enter into the kingdom if you do good but if you do wrong you won't be protected if you live in wicked out here the scriptures talk about him that is upright from the heart um david this is what david also says this is psalms psalms 101 and verse 2 it says i will behave myself wisely I behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when will thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. When you're in your house, most times you by yourself. So even in your house, you know, you still practicing and rehearsing righteousness and not just face value that only when, you know, people are wrong and seeing you and can give credit to your righteousness, you know, you have... You know, you 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 have the desire to do righteously. Now, righteously support righteousness supposed to be between you and your haba shemia or shai. And by default, it is extended to everyone else. Because if you being righteous for your haba shemia or shai's sake, you know, by default, you being righteous in general. All right, by default. All right, that's just how it goes. All right, because. All right, let me just read this incident here real quick. This is um, this is this is what your unrighteousness. All right. This is what your unrighteousness. Where is it? Um. Second, the account with Akan or Achan, I think was his name. Um, what is his name? Let me see. A C E G, and I think that's how they spell his name. I can't remember. So, you know, everybody knows the incident with Akano Achan. You know, when you know he took all the things that he wasn't supposed to keep and he put them under the midst of his tent. And basically, Israel was being judged for it. So, your unrighteous living could also affect others around you and not just yourself. All right? Um... This is Joshua chapter 7. Verse 10. It says, And Yahweh said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore lies thou dost upon thy feast? Israel hath sinned. It says, And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. Right? If you do wrong, all right? It says, for they have taken of their cursed thing and have stolen and dissembled also. It says, and they have put it even among their, their own stuff. 
It says, therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. And if you do evil, you're not going to be able to stand against your enemy in the day of trouble. All right? It says, but turn their backs before their enemies because they were cursed. It says, neither will I be with you anymore except you destroy their curse from among you. Yes, so unless you put away wickedness from among you, the Lord, Yahweh Hashem, Yahshua, not going to deliver you because you did wrong. Because you're doing wrong, because you're doing evil, because you're doing some form of uncleanness, the Lord will depart from you. So cleanse your ways. As the scripture says, Psalms 119 and 9, it says, Wherewithal shall a young man be cleansed? It says, Taking heed thereto according to thy word. Even Achio said it in Judith. He said, If these people sin, you know, don't go up. Um, go up. But if they didn't sin, you know, don't go up against them because their God. You know will deliver them all right their god will deliver them all right this is um wisdom of solomon chapter one wisdom of solomon chapter one and verse three says for forward toward separate from yahweh we don't want that separation we want that bond that unity with the spirit of yahweh as i said for forward toward separate from yahweh and his power, when it is tried, reprove it the unwise. For into a malicious soul shall wisdom not enter, nor dwell in a body that is subject unto sin. Yeah, when you're making sin a priority, when, you, when you're doing nine sins and one righteous act, guess what? you basically enveloped in sin. All right? It says, for the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding here. Yeah, and basically you're going to be reprobate. And will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. Right? So the Lord, you're not going to make right judgments. The Lord not going to be with you if you continuously do iniquity. And as I said, as the scripture says, we are about to enter into the days of trouble. There are going to be a lot of deaths. The scripture says their dead body shall be on the ground like dung. All right? There are gonna be no end of their corpses, as the scripture says. If you if you if you don't do right, if you don't do good, if you don't do righteousness, you're gonna be among the dead. You are going to be among the dead. As the scripture says, righteousness is immortal. So do good and no harm shall come unto you. All right, do good and no harm shall come unto you. This is the book of Psalms 91 and verse 11. Pause. Screen. All right, Psalms 91 and verse 11. It says, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague. I said that verse um, 10 and uh, verse 9. It says, Because thou hast made Yahabah Shemi Shai, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, it says there shall no evil befall thee neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling because why because you made Yahabah Hashem Shai your God just calling on the name Yahabah Hashem Shai doesn't mean that you make him your God it means that if you keep his commandments if you do the things that he commanded you to do then you serve in the Lord all right verse 11 it says for he will give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways so the lord will send his angels to watch over and protect you if 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 you do the right things if you do good the lord will send his angels to deliver you all right but you have to do good this is psalms 34 and 6 it says this poor man cried and Yahaba Hashem Yashai heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped around them that fear him and delivered them. So the Lord going to send his angels to encamp around you in the time of trouble everywhere you go. As the scripture says in Psalms 91 and 12 said, Lest thou dash thy foot against the stones. So if you do good, hey, guess what? They're going to bear you up. They're going to take care of you. The Lord going to take care of you. All right? The Lord Yahabah Hashem Yahashai, he's going to take care of you. This is Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. For Yahabah Hashem Yahashai is not unrighteous to forget your, your work and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. 
So not only that you're doing his work, but you're also keeping yourself clean, that you don't be a dokimos, be a castaway. Because you could preach this word and be a castaway at the end. This is about the salvation of your soul. So you hold on, you keep your body under subjection, and you do right. Cast away forward thoughts. Don't be, don't be bold in decision making. Always seek advice. All right. Don't be bold in decision making. It's an easy way for you to slip away. Always pray. Always fast unto the Lord Yahweh Shimei Shai and beg Him for guidance and to keep you. We about to enter into some serious days, some serious times, and we need the Lord Yahweh Shimei Shai at our right hands. All right. We need the Lord, Yahaba Shemia Shai, at our right hands. But as the scripture says, your iniquities have, with, have withholden good things from you. Your iniquities have withholden good things from you. So if you keep doing wrong, the Lord, Yahaba Shemia Shai, the Lord will judge you. The Lord will judge you. This is First John chapter 3. And... Verse 20 says, For if our heart condemn us, Yahweh is greater than our heart. So like in time of trouble, you're going to be worried if the Lord going to deliver you or not. Because why? Because you know you was doing wickedness. So cast off the wickedness. It says, I know it all things. It says, Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence towards Yahweh. If our heart condemn us not, we have confidence towards your house. You don't want to lose that confidence. And what makes you lose the confidence is by living wickedly. That's what makes you lose the confidence by living wickedly. All right. So make sure you have that full confidence in the Lord. This is the final precept here. This is Second Ezra chapter 2 and verse. Um, not Second Ezra. My bad, Salak. Um, Ecclesiasticus. Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 and verse 13. It says, Woe unto him that is faint hearted, he doubting, he worried, he wondering if the Lord will deliver him or not. For he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. Yeah. Peter sank. Just remember that Peter sank because of doubt. The scripture says, Neither doubt. Alright? But to cast off that doubt. You have to build your confidence in the Lord and you build in that confidence in the Lord by well-doing. That's how you build in the confidence. In well-doing, you actually build that, that strong bond with your husband, Yahaba Shemiah Shai. So do good and you will be delivered. Alright? So with that, I want to give all praises, honor and glory to Yahaba Shemiah Shai. I want to give double honor to the apostles of great men who do rule well. Salutation to the men of the hopeful and saints say elect. There's Abraham Marcus out in Trinidad saying Shalom and stay strong. Shalom.